we're going to talk about the Wikibase ecosystem indeed. We're going to talk about uh, editable linked data for everyone. Maybe. It all started uh, with Wikidata. Um, Wikidata is Wikimedia's knowledge base and it provides general structured data about the world to Wikipedia. So when you look at the Wikipedia article today and you see the info box on the site um, with um, basic facts about the topic you're reading about, uh, then that might come from Wikidata. And it's a central place that stores all this data for Wikipedia in a language independent way so that everyone, uh, all the Wikipedia language editions can benefit from it. And Wikidata has become rather successful. Um, after um, seven years of existing now, we have around uh, 12,500 people who edit at least once, at least five uh, times a month. Um, and we describe almost 75 million things in the world. Like this could be uh, this building, this could be Brussels, this could be a famous um, actor, this could be a movie, things like that. Um, how does this look like in practice? When you go to Wikidata today, you might find pages like this one about uh, Margaret Hamilton and find out that um, she was an American NASA scientist and mathematician, that there are 41 uh, different language versions of Wikipedia who have an article about her. And if you didn't know that yet, she also was a human. Um, but now you love machines who are also supposed to know this. Um, for them, that's not quite so obvious. So we record stuff like that as well. And if you go further down a bit, you will find things like that she um, was a developer on the Apollo space program, for example. And if you go even further, um, you will find links to a ton of other places on the internet other websites, other catalogs, um, libraries, and so on, where you find more information about her. And now imagine that all nearly um, 75 million times about many different things. So this is what it looked like at the beginning, right? You have Wikidata in the, in the middle, and it provides data to these other Wikimedia projects like Wikipedia, um, Wikivoyage, Wikimedia Commons, and many others. And then with all these connections um, to these other databases, we build up a semantic web or a part of the semantic web that connects all this information, both readable by humans, but also by machines. Um, and this is then used by, for example, your personal assist digital assistant to answer your questions, or if you get a quick answer in your search results, that might um, be powered by that, or your local library system might uh, provide you with additional information about the author and um, their books, and then that might also come from there. Now, <clears throat> with Wikidata quietly gaining a lot of traction and attention, we had a problem because all this data is maintained by a community for the world. And um, we reached a point where lots and lots of people wanted to put more and more specialized data into Wikidata without necessarily being willing and able to maintain that over the long run. Um, and we said, like, Wikidata should be a very central place in the semantic web, but it shouldn't have all the data because that's not what the 
semantic was about, right? It's about decentralizing and connecting and linking information. <clears throat> so lots of people approached us like, can't we run our own thing? Can't we run our own Wikidata? And that's what we made uh, possible. So the software that's running Wikidata is called Wikibase. And over the last two years, we have put a lot of work into making it possible for other people, organizations, companies uh, to run their own Wikibase with the idea that at some point we have a picture that looks like this, um, which would be the Wikibase ecosystem, where all the data that we already have and all the data that we already connect to is further enriched and connected to many different um, individual wikis that publish specialized data. Um, so you could imagine um, there's a famous German marmalade producer. Um, they have lots of marmalades, jams, and chutneys, and they might have their own wiki base about marmalades, jams, and chutneys, where they describe all the ingredients and how they uh, connect to other varieties of the same uh, marmalade, for example. And then if you're really interested in marmalades, you go to that wiki and find all the information you could ever ask for. So since we've been doing this, there are quite a few uh, installations out there already that do really cool stuff with Wikibase and connected to Wikidata and other Wikibase installations. Uh, this, for example, is uh, Lingua Libra. Lingua Libra is a project to uh, help people record pronunciations so that other people who don't speak their language can hear how a word is pronounced. And they structure their word lists and their connections to Wikidata through their own Wikibase instance, for example. Or we have FACRED, which is a database that collects data about the humanities. And they started out with data about the Illuminati. Yes, this is a real thing. <laughs> Um, so they recorded things like um, all, all these um, anonymous people wrote to other anonymous people. So who was behind this? When did they write to each other? Um, what did they write about? And you can, once you have all that data connected and queryable, it becomes really interesting to ask questions about the Illuminati, for example. By now, they expanded into uh, other humanities data as well, but that's how they started. <clears throat> or you have Rhizome, which is a museum for digital born art. Um, you might remember um, some at the beginning of the web, and as it grew, artists have played with, for example, technical glitches in browsers. Um, exploiting bugs and so on to create art. And that um, art is preserved by this organization called Rhizome, who is now cataloging it in their own Wikibase instance to make it easier to find, to figure out which browser version uh, and which operating system you need to use to actually be able to see what the artist had intended, and so on. Um, <clears throat> Or we have a, a Wikibase instant called personaldata.io, and they are trying to do something about surveillance capitalism by helping people have conversations about it, by exposing how personal data is used, um, by connecting organizations that, um, that fight against and uh, provide alternatives. Um, very worthy goal, in my opinion. And then to sum up the, uh, the few showcases, we're currently working with a lot of uh, national libraries, for example, the German National Library, um, the French National Library, as well as some um, library groups on um, trialing Wikibase as a system for their own uh, internal cataloging systems or as augmentation to that. Now, you might think, why are all these people using Wikibase? What makes it special? And um, there's many re reasons for that, but uh, let me highlight some. The first one is that it's actually 
editable link data, right? Like Wikipedia, you can enable your editors, your users to change your data, to contribute to it, to augment it. And a lot of the existing linked data that is out there is read only. And this is a way to change that and, and give people the power to support your cause or your organization in contributing to it through additional data, to corrections, and so on. Then, thanks to its foundation um, in Wikimedia, it has community at the core. So there are many features in Wikibase already that help you build a community and help that community organize. Um, that is things like talk pages, um, user rights, and much more, which existing library systems, for example, have a very hard time providing. The other thing that's really important for people is multilinguality. So the screenshots I showed you um, were all in English, but with a click of a button, I can show you the very same data in German and French or in any other language that you, that you would like and that someone has contributed uh, translations for. But you're working on the same data. And another thing that is really intriguing people is that Wikibase is built with the idea in mind that the world is very complex and that we want to capture that complexity in data. And that is very hard. Um, but I think we've gotten quite far in making that possible. So the world is weird. <laughs> um, for example, at some point, Sweden decided hmm, it would be really nice to have a February 3rd in just one year. Because why not? <laughs> so the rule that February only ever has 29 or less days? Nope. <laughs> there, uh, the Swedes broke that rule. Or there was this woman who decided to marry the Eiffel Tower. The world is complex. <laughs> and th these complexities are exactly what Wikipedians want to write about, of course, right? Because other people want to read about it. So Wikibase was built to deal with that and to be able to express that flexibility and complexity that the world has. And the last thing I want to mention is this is the connection to Wikidata. Um, if you are running a Wikibase instance, then it's very easy to connect that to Wikidata and benefit from a lot of the work that has been done there already. Um, in the future, we want to make it very easy, for example, to take over all the decisions that the Wikidata community has already made about how to model the world. Like the fact that we want a human to have a date of birth and a place of birth, and that is something we want to express, um, that should be very easy to take over to your own Wikibase instance. And the other thing is that if organizations, companies, and so on are using data from Wikidata, then we want to make it very easy for them to also jump to your Wikibase instance in the Wikibase ecosystem. And with that, I hope I gave you a glimpse into the Wikibase ecosystem and made you excited um, to try it and join us. Thank you. So Wikidata has notability guidelines, um, like most Wikipedias have. They are very relaxed, but they are there. Um, and they basically say anything that has a Wikipedia article can have an entry in Wikidata. Um, anything that is described by a reliable source out there, like a library system, for example, can probably have an entry in Wikidata. 
and anything that is needed to fulfill a structural need. So let's say you have um, a famous person, their child was not famous, but the child of that child was famous, then you can uh, create an entry for the person in the middle to complete the chain, basically. Um, that, that is a rough guideline. And then um, there's the question of how much information do we collect about each of those things. And for example, as I was saying earlier, the Marmalade Museum is probably too much for, for Wikidata itself and probably deserves its own Wikibase instance. Also because you can build up a community of specialists who really care about this particular topic and have a lot of experience about it and know how to model the difference between a chutney and a marmalade <laughs> and a jam, which I do not. Um, yeah, so, and if you're really unsure, uh, on Wikidata itself, there is a discussion page where you can bring it up and, and get some input from the editors. how the collaboration between Wikimedia and the libraries works. Hmm. So they, they have, the ones we are working with, they have dedicated people inside the library who are tasked with evaluating Wikibase for their particular use case. And then we regularly exchange with them, we have meetings with them um, to talk about what they want from Wikibase, uh, if that's already possible with it, if we need to make changes, um, or if, if Wikibase for that particular case just isn't the right thing to use. Um, and then over several months, um, we go through that evaluation phase with them and, and support them in that. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in how these uh, links between different Wikibases are. Is it just web links, or is it some more advanced kind of federation where it's one hmm. full information from another one? Right, so um, right now it's not just web links, but it's links and um, links in RDF, for example, that you can follow as you do in the semantic web. Um, we are working on more advanced uh, federation features. Uh, we're starting now in two weeks or so to start building more on top of that so that you can take more advantage than you currently can on of this distributedness of, of the whole ecosystem. Yes. How does Wikibase handle uh, contested points? Um, mm -hmm. For example, I, I know there was a, a long uh, wiki battle over if something should dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, how do you uh, handle that? Yeah. On the, on the technical level. So, Exactly because of things like that, um, we have built Wikibase not around the idea of there's one truth out there that we have to model. Um, but you can have, for example, conflicting data. Um, you can have uh, things like um, China claims that Taiwan belongs to China and is a part of it, while Taiwan itself says no. <laughs> Um, and you can have those statements uh, next to each other. And then you have something called qualifiers where you can qualify this. For example, saying um, that this, this particular statement is supported by the United Nations. Um, or you can say that um, this is based on a particular treaty, for example. Or that something was true only from um, one point in time to another in the past. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility in that. Um, it's, of course, not able to express all the complexity in the world that you can uh, think of, but it gets quite a lot farther than typical databases. How do you assure against the fragmentation? You know, people use quite different models for explaining the same thing. Right. So what we're starting to work on now is the ability to use Wikidata's properties and items to in your own Wikibase instance so that everyone would be able to use the same vocabulary 
ideally. Um, how that plays out, we have to see. <laughs> but I have high hopes. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that is the idea for now. And of course, there's a lot of links um, and same as links uh, um, as understood in the semantic web so that you can say, okay, if they are talking about this concept, that's the same thing they are talking about. And then you can um, follow those. Yes. Okay. So, media. Wikipedia. Wikipedia has that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe Faden can uh, help you understand more of that. Um, but there is a changes stream that you can follow, um, both looking at a website, but also via APIs. Sorry, I have a hard time understanding you. <laughs> yes. So um, the initial storing and editing of the data happens in MediaWiki. Um, and then for querying and answering more complex questions on that data, uh, we have a Sparkler endpoint, um, and we use Blaze Graph for that. Blaze Graph. More questions, yes. Is there a roadmap for uh, those new features about the connecting the Wikibases? Yes. Um, so we want to start in the next two weeks and then roll out the first version of that, um, hopefully in, in very few months, <laughs> depending on how it goes, um, and then iterate on that based on what people tell us uh, they need in addition. So the first version will be very simple. You will be able to use only the properties that Wikidata provides, like date of birth, place of birth, um, links to other databases, and so on, and then um, we'll build on that. some way of dealing with uh, licensing. So mm -hmm. data often comes with some kind of licensing. I guess yes. most of Wikibase is Creative Commons. So uh, Wikidata itself. Mm -hmm. how to deal with that. Right. So Wikidata itself is CC0. Um, so only data that is licensed CC0 is supposed to go into Wikidata. Um, which is one of the reasons why organizations might decide to run their own Wikibase instance because they can't um, release their data under, under CC0. Um, and then it would be up to the consumer to decide because they see where the data is com coming from and that Wiki has a, has a license uh, declaration. And they would then need to see, how, uh, depending on how they use the data, um, comply with the license. More questions. Thank you very much.